Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome inside episode 413 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan in the heat of the desert in Paradise Valley alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains and Josh Norris has stirred the pot ahead of his first revenge game against the team that drafted him back in 2017. We'll tell you what he said and it's among a few interesting nuggets from today's availability. Coach DJ Smith did announce Matt Murray will get his first start of the season. We'll touch on that and who could be the odd man out with Brady Kachuk re-entering the lineup. We'll get into all that. Plus, is Eric Branstrom on the block? Elliot Friedman seems to think so, so we'll touch on what would be a reasonable return for the return for Mark Stone. This is the Locked On Senators Podcast, your team every day. Today is Wednesday, October 20th, and Pilsy, Josh Norris woke up and chose violence. Hey, I mean, he, he didn't really say anything too aggressive, but he did speak the truth, so you can't blame him there. And if you're Josh Norris, like, you don't have that much attachment to the San Jose Sharks since they pretty much drafted you, you played a bit in college, and then they shipped you off. So he's an Ottawa senator, and he's making it clear. This is what I'm talking about, Ross. This is the rivalry I want between the Sens and the Sharks. Let's keep this going. Keep putting uh, fuel to this fire. Here's the direct quote, courtesy TSN 1200, Josh Norris saying, they really went for it, getting Carlson, and it didn't work out for them. It's put me here, and that's good for me. I couldn't be more happy. There it is, Pillsy pulling it up from TSN 1200 if you're watching on YouTube. And why wouldn't he be confident, right? Josh Norris finishing fourth in Calder voting, had a fantastic rookie season where he would have finished third on the San Jose Sharks in points behind only a yep. Vander Kane who you won't see anytime soon in the okay. NHL and Tomash Hurdle great player there gotta admit talent when you see it but Pilsy how fired up do you think not only Josh Norris but Chris Tierney on the Senators side and then Eric Carlson and Rudy Balsers and Jonathan Dolan I guess we can say too on the Shark side we're really looking at quite the revenge game on deck Oh, yeah, definitely. And we won't dive into it too much on today's episode. We're going to get into that in tomorrow's episode. But there is a, there's a good appetite for this game coming up, especially like the NHL schedule makers gave us three games, great games right off the hop. And then we're in a drought here waiting for this next game to happen. So we're starving to have this game because the short amount of time without a Senators game day has been too long. I mean, even Belleville hasn't played in a while. They play on Friday. So we're excited for that game. That's for damn sure. And stay tuned. Next week, we'll have a Belleville Senator join the show. We almost had Branny on, but it didn't work out. All good. All good. We do have a great interview with Shane Pinto. If you haven't seen it oh, yet, yeah. you can go download it anywhere you get your podcast. Hand up. Again, I'm down visiting the in-laws right now. And internet in the desert. Shocker. Hard to get. Uh, you missed that Winnipeg internet. Oh, oh boy. Man. In Winnipeg, the, the episodes upload onto YouTube in maybe five minutes. It's unreal. Yesterday, it was about five and a half hours. So, <laughs> yeah, a little different tough. story there. Yeah, we, so we learned our lesson the hard way. But you're, uh, you're on editing the rest of the week, so have fun. Yeah, that'll happen. That'll happen. But uh, definitely, if there's one episode we're going to put out late, that was one that was worth waiting for because that Shane Pinto interview is probably on the uh, Locked On Center's podcast, Mount Rushmore of uh, interviews there. So definitely one of the top ones. It was great connecting with them and uh, he seemed to really vibe with us. So it was a lot of fun to chat with him. You had an awesome final question too. That left him on such a high <laughs> note. If you haven't heard it, go, go find out whether or not Pinner is or is not a dog guy. Quick, putting you on the spot. Who's on your Mount Rushmore of Locked On Senators interviews? Well, I mean, as far as like, like connecting with them and just having an overall good conversation, definitely... Pinto, Crooker, I mean, Timmy, he, he's a staple there. Got to figure it yeah, out. Got the got pointing it. figured out. Uh, and then, man, the fourth one on there. That's Dark tough. Horse, our, inter our first time we had Jamie McLennan on was amazing. 
Oh yeah, obviously uh, a couple of goalie huggers chalking it up. How about uh, you know actually who might make the final cut here? Cassian describing that brawl yes. up against Montreal was all time. Like to hear it from a firsthand viewpoint of one of the most exciting, not a, not even just Ottawa Senators moments, but playoff moments and rivalry up against the Habs. That was all time. So on the spot, there's my Mount Rushmore of interviews. Yeah, Matt Cassian certainly deserves some notoriety yeah. from that. And he's a guy who works in media, right, in Edmonton. So he was great to kind of vibe with, go back and forth. He does a lot of work with the Locked On Edmonton Oilers host Hernan Salas, who's an absolute beauty. So uh, we'll be looking forward to that. I'm just going to pull up the schedule right now if you're looking on YouTube. And this is what we're talking about. Three games in four nights, then off for friggin' three full days. Enough's enough. And then they play three in five, which will be nice, kind of regular. Three American opponents. And then they go all week without a game. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, no action. And then they're at Dallas, which will be their first game in the United States of America since March 11th, 2020 in Los Angeles. So they get their season series out of the way with the Dallas Stars just like that. Do you think that we could see a little revenge? I know we're getting ahead of ourselves, but that I can't get over that slash from Rupe Hints. I know he had uh, I think it was 5, Fasca. 000, Fasca, yeah, okay. We'll we'll take uh, Hints off the hot seat then. Faxa. And then Jamie Benn, too, with that cross check. I hated both of them. And the fight, yeah. Yeah, but the fight was earlier, though. So then you go back and you look, and Pinner's just getting absolutely crushed off the faceoff. And you see other media members from Western Conference team saying that Jamie Benn does that all the time. So hopefully that gets settled here sooner than later. 8.30 start time Eastern, which will be a little bit different. And programming note, this weekend as well, the game against the New York Rangers is a 1 p.m. start. We're going to get into the Rangers because they could be an interesting trade candidate for the Ottawa Senators, Pilsy in the coming weeks as Elliot Friedman put in his 32 thoughts that Eric Branstrom is on the trade block. If you were reading the tea leaves, the fact he didn't make this team out of training camp kind of told you all you needed to know, hey? Well, and I mean, I think being on the trade block is interesting because that can mean a whole bunch of different things, right? Like it depends what you're getting out of that. And I think if your other teams, you got to be assuming that a player of that much value in Eric Branstrom that isn't able to crack this top six of a decor and is being sent back to Belleville, at, like you got to assume the team is just not working out and they're looking to retain some of that value while, while Branstrom's still at a high value before. Like the longer he stays in Belleville, the more his values go, goes down, in my opinion. So really, you don't want that to happen for too long. And if guys like Michael Delzato and Nick Holden and Victor Mete are ousting him for an NHL roster spot, it's just not working in Ottawa. It's, it would seem to other teams. I'm talking about from other teams' perspectives. So they got to be calling on Brandstrom. They got to be. New nickname alert, by the way. Josh Norris, obviously, uh, in his availability today, too, mentioned that Del Zotto is Uncle Deli. Uncle Deli, yeah. That's a, that's a weird one, but, uh, I mean, it makes sense. He, he is the older guy, and he seems like he would be the fun uncle type guy, so that's all good. No question. Speaking of Branstrom, though, Cam Robinson, who's been a guest on this show as well, he works with Elite Prospects, he made a really good point. He said, honestly, if you suspect even the slightest fear that your first-round pick won't break right, you should sell immediately. The best time to move a prospect is yesterday. Yep. The next best time is today. So that speaks to your point of if they are going to move on for Branstrom. And again, what we saw last year in the NHL was promising. So that's why it's kind of tough to see. But then at the same time, you and I did not have glowing reviews from his first game that we saw live in Laval this season with Belleville. Again, still getting hit hard all the time. And that's another problem with holding on to him for too long. He takes one of those hits the wrong way, yeah. value plummets even further. Yeah, honestly. And and that's the thing. Like, I, I'm sure other teams can really envision what Branstrom can do for them. And I don't I don't want this conversation to get twisted as in we're sit, we're supporting the trade Branstrom immediately argument. I personally I'm not quite there yet. I think you need to give him another fair shake in the NHL. He needs one last fair shake, and then you can kind of evaluate what you have from him. But at this point, there's other needs in this organization over what Branstrom brings, especially with Jake Sanderson creeping over uh, his shoulder just about oh, to You come, heard Pinner uh, talking about NHL. Hey, speaking of uh, a new nickname alert, like now Tyler Boucher and Shane Pinto, when we've brought up Sandy, their first words is the real deal. Yeah. That, Not I mean, even as a nickname, but it's so true. 
Yeah, the real deal is definitely true. So if you're the Ottawa Senators, you're already starting to pencil Sanderson above Brandstrom in your depth chart. And that really can't be happening. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens to Brandstrom here. But for me personally, I'm not quite at the trade level. But like we just talked about, if the Senators are interested in trading him, then get it done. Like don't uh, don't stall if that's their stance. 100 percent we'll discuss an interesting name that's been floated around around in rumors but the quote from Elliot Friedman in 32 thoughts he goes talking about how important it was to sign Brady Kachuk to a long-term deal and then his next thought is the next item of business for Ottawa is Eric Brancher for me the next item of business it's is Josh locking Norris. up Josh Norris yeah but that is just me uh, there's also a thought about Claude Giroux that we'll get to soon. We also have to get to what DJ Smith spoke about, who might come out of the lineup with Brady Kachuk coming back. All that coming up right afterward from our friends at Bet Online, the number one sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. And for great reason, especially at this time of year when you're looking at Bet Online, it's all about wagering, getting in to the whole league. Of course, you've got your team, but when the Seattle Kraken are playing the New Jersey Devils and you see Dax is in goal, yeah, you want to support the, the friend of the show, of course. So you put a couple shekels at betonline.ag, but it's also an expansion team. So wouldn't it be great if that money that you're risking for a bet that you're betting with your heart, not your head, wouldn't it be great if it's just given to you by Bet Online? Good thing for the 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. So don't sit on the sidelines anymore. Get into the action and use our promo code. It's that easy. Go create your account. When you do, use promo code Locked On for a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Pilsy, I'm giving you the day off on your parlay. You need to regroup. We'll get back to that on Friday's show. You'll get a good one going into the weekend. But I was one goal off. Just going to throw that in there quick. So you're getting one close. So you, so you just need a day off, day of rest tomorrow as well. But we know you're hammering the Sens against the Sharks. So you can give you can give that a, a Pilsy's stamp of approval. But don't sit on the sidelines. Get into the action. And don't forget the promo code locked on to receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. It's Bet Online, your online sports book experts. All right, Pilsy. So we discussed what Josh Norris had to say going into his revenge game, but I might have to take up some issue to what DJ Smith had to say. Because we know Brady Kachuk comes back. Somebody's shifting over to the right side. It's going to be Alex Formanton, at least to start. However, it looks like Parker Kelly's the odd man out. Okay, fine. He's a kid. Although I did really like his game. I have for, for years now, but I did like what he brought against Dallas. He had that energizer shift where he was banging away in front of the net. And I thought that that's more than Sanford's done since he came to town. However, it seems like if it's not Parker Kelly, it's going to be Tyler Ennis that's the healthy scratch. How is that even possible? Yeah, I don't love that move. Uh, Tyler Ennis, to me, has looked good. We talked about it. That uh, I don't know if you... Yeah, they're, they're the second power play unit, but it was Ennis, Pinto, and Connor Brown. Like Those three together were just buzzing on the power play. I think Tierney might have been a part of that as well, that kind of group. So for Ennis to be the odd man out really sucks here because he's one of the highest point getters on the team. He's got three points already. So I think that's a bit of a head scratcher. But then also we talked about it, uh, Ross, I think on yesterday's show, Parker Kelly's Corsi numbers were not very good there. A lot of um, shot attempts going the other way when he was on the ice. But at the same token, though, Ian Mendez, uh, his article in The Athletic today, obviously another great article. I don't even need to get into that. Ian's already bringing uh, good articles every single time. But he highlights how the Sens' individual scoring chances. Shane Pinto, shout out Pinner, gets, uh, he's got nine total. Drake Batherson has eight. And then individual scoring chances for Parker Kelly, right there with Drake Batherson at eight. And you see that with his Energizer Bunny type yeah. play where he just makes something out of nothing and just sparks something so quickly. And he's got a nose for those hard areas. Like when he gets the puck and wants to get a scoring chance, he doesn't just kind of send it to the net and hope for the best. Like he's driving for that high real estate and he's not worried about taking a hit or uh, having someone try to get the puck off his stick. He's heading right to the front of the net and trying to get good scoring opportunities. So if Parker Kelly is the guy out, it's unfortunate, but I think DJ Smith said it himself. Like he's loved the way Parker Kelly has played. And I don't think him getting taken out of the lineup, if that does happen is a reflection of his play. So I think, 
you know, Sanford would probably be the guy that I would take out personally, even though Sanford has also played a little bit better than we saw in the preseason. He's got one assist on the power play. Other than that, a couple decent shots. But if you're talking energy and passion wise and how this Ottawa Senators team is hoping to play night after night, I would say Ennis and, and uh, Parker Kelly reflect that culture much more than Zach Sanford has at, at this point, at least. Yeah. And he's a guy who you just brought in as kind of a filler, I'd imagine. One year left on Sanford's contract, $2 million. I'm just pulling up right now. This is from Hockey Reference, if you're watching on YouTube. And these are the lowest time on ice per game. Interesting to see Chris Tierney there. Hey, Pilsy, a guy who's produced. But you go down the list. Sanford's played 11.55 per game. Tyler Ennis, 11.17. Alex Formanton, 10.55. Parker Kelly, 850. Now, Logan Shaw here comes up at the bottom at 616, but he's also won nine out of 12 faceoffs. And he's yeah. the only guy who's taken more than five who's at over 50%. And I think that tells you a lot about this team. And don't look at the positions. I don't know how they get them so wrong all the time. Tyler Ennis is not a center, and Logan Shaw is not a right winger. So I don't <laughs> know. And Dra- like in Chell, Drake Bastion's been listed as a centerman for like three straight years. He hasn't yeah. taken a single face-off, I don't think, at the NHL level. And if it is, it's because the guy gets kicked out. But Drake will be alongside Josh Norris and Brady Kachuk on the top line. And that's what makes this conversation a little bit trivial because, yes, a guy's going to be out of the fourth line, but realistically, they were going to play a fourth-line role anyways. The reason why I think Ennis needs to stay in is because he does add that element on the power play, and that second unit has been looking very good when you have Ennis and, uh, and Pinto on there. Together, I thought that they've been really solid. So I'm excited to see more and more. And and Connor Brown finishes off that second uh, unit. It was Ennis Brown and Pinto. And we, we saw Connor Brown had three assists on Sunday. So can he keep rolling and rolling? We know that identity line. And Shane Pinto, Pilsy, we know he's due for the Sen Central bump. What we don't know is what's going on with Matt Murray, Pilsy. What are you expecting to see from the Senators de facto number one goalie and uh, I'll, we'll start with that and then I'll, I'll continue afterwards yeah well what I'm expecting to see from Matt Murray is he's he's had the time off that I think he needs that obviously the coaching staff he, he himself thinks he need and I've said it a bunch of times if he's not 100% don't put him in there and the Sens have been very adamant and it seems like they have the same mindset which is great he's got to be 100% by now I would assume he gets I don't want to say an easy opponent because, I mean, the Sharks have looked good this season despite uh, some questionable, like on paper, their goaltending of Aiden Hill and Reimer is an interesting duo, but it's better than Martin Jones and uh, Aaron Dell. That's for damn sure. So it's an improvement, but they just spanked the Montreal Canadiens 5 nothing. So this is a team that's feeling hot. So Matt Murray is going to have a big test here up against a Western Conference team that they haven't played in a long time. And I think... Matt Murray, it's tough to really definitively say how he's going to play, but I really think if he's feeling good, he has a chance to shut the door on this team, and the Senators, they can play with this San Jose Sharks team, I think. They've got the they've got more speed. I would say they ah, more talent is tough because there are some good players still in San Jose, but I really think that this should be an opportunity for the Sens to go up against a much more veteran team than they're used to and really show that they can stand up to them. Not that many players are left from the 2016 edition of the San Jose Sharks, but Pilsy, Matt Murray won a Stanley Cup against the San Jose Sharks. Yeah, true. Yeah, exactly. So he's got to feel pretty confident about that. That's awesome. I had completely forgotten about that. In three regular season games against the Sharks, he's got two wins and a 941 save percentage. So, hey, let's just hope that he can keep that rolling. And if we're if we're talking about keeping it uh, keeping it rolling here, Ross, I was looking at his last five games of the season. Just let me pull that up here. He was even good was, in the preseason too. Yeah, he was good in the preseason as well. Put some color in his gear. Yeah, that's that always helps, eh? So for his last five games, yeah, he was three and one. He had a .954 save percentage. Like, he was killing it. He won four of those five games. Like, so Matt Murray's recent stats go to show with the right goalie coach, with his health, with his confidence, he can be an elite goalie. Now, obviously, that's a five-game sample size from months ago. So how much can I really stand on uh, on that argument? But 
consistency is what we need from Matt Murray. And he showed consistency in his last little stretch. So if he can get started here today, that's good. And man, shout out Gus and Forsberg. Like they're not, Holding they're not making the fort. And they're not making him seem comfortable as a number one starter. Like those guys make like the minimum salary and he's one of the highest paid goalies in the league. And they're, I don't want to say outperforming because he hasn't had a chance to stand up for himself, but they're at a pace now where Matt Murray can't just be given the starting job. Like he's going to have to prove he's better than these minimum wage goaltenders. So he's got his work. He's got his work cut out for him. So let's see what he can do here. Oh my goodness! He's making CEO money with with uh, all all the all the money he's being paid by the Sens yeah, here, and he's no he's question. got the entry level uh, minimum wage guys outperforming him. Yeah, the way I I kind of see it is that uh, Philip Gustafson had half the amount of wins last year as Matt Murray. Matt Murray had ten wins last year, and Gus had five. Except Gus played ten games, and Murray played I think uh, twenty seven, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, yeah. you look you look at that and and. You can easily see that the confidence wasn't there early in, in last year. And with that decor ahead of him, like pff, you and I would have got it lit up 10 times worse than Matt Murray. However, I think even with a good decor, Ross, we might get lit up 10 times. More <laughs> I was than trying Matt to Murray. move on before you could chirp back at that. That's so good. Um, but speaking of goaltenders, before we move on to Branny, a guy who they might give up on too early. Did the Sens give up on Craig Anderson too early? This guy's looking like he's the leader for the Vesna. Yeah, I mean, shout out Craig Anderson and shout this is out what, Craig Anderson, sends legend. This is what happens when you get get discounted and you get a chip on your shoulder, right? Like I even thought in Washington, I won't go ahead and say he was great, but he he fulfilled the role they needed for him, and he played a lot more than a lot of people thought. So that gave him a starting job in the NHL, which is wild to think of, but. You got to make uh, do with what you got. And he's looking good in Buffalo. Shout out also Christian Willannon going to Buffalo as well. Yep. A couple former sends. So that'll be interesting to see how that works out for them. But Buffalo is kind of like, uh, it's it's like last chance you know, you vibes. You know what I mean? Like it's, all right, you've tried your hand everywhere else. If you're willing to take a 750K contract, come on, come on down. down to Buffalo. Yep. Hey, so Craig Anderson, 2-0 and this year with a 150 goals against average and a 954 save percentage he's sitting on 293 career wins pilsy so it's going to be awesome oh, he'll to, make it Absolutely. he's got to get to the road to uh to 300 now the sends are in winnipeg on january 15th so i'm not going to be able to make it home that soon after go see a sense game tough sell for the partner and all that however tuesday january 18th the buffalo sabers are in ottawa and come on, Sens fans, sell that game out for Andy. All the great memories, all the Andy chants. That's going to be a special night for a guy who really deserves a better send-off than COVID ended up giving him. And with the team that was put in front of him for the last couple of years, for him to stand in there game after game, like credit to Andy, man. He's by far, I'm going to say, like it was always 1A Andy, 1B Laleem in terms of the greatest goalies in Sens history. But it's not even close. Andy is so head and shoulders. Number one, you've got like the signature moments that he had, you know, saluting the crowd when Nicole Anderson was in Boston, when she was going through her cancer treatment from the playoff run in 2013 to really cementing the Sens in 2012, the pesky Sens. They won how many games that year? 2-1, 3-2. Andy just stood on his head. He had great goalies come behind him. Ben Bishop, Robin Leonard. These guys were trying to take his job and he just wouldn't allow it. 2017, of course, the culmination in all that when the world got to see just how talented he is. So shout out Andy for an absolutely fantastic start to the season. And we're going to be cheering for him all year long, except those couple games when they're playing the Ottawa Senators. All right, Pills, you want to hit us with a little Built Bar promo and then we'll get to our chat on whether or not Brant from being on the block could bring back the Senators a position of need. Pilsy, go on, buddy. Yeah, well, hey, if there's one thing you need in your day, oh. Ross, it's protein. And there are a bunch of different ways you can get your protein. But if you want a healthy, delicious, biting experience, I don't know why I said biting experience, tasty experience from Built Bar, the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, that's what I would suggest. And Built Bar is always coming out with these hot new flavors and there's so many different amazing flavors. They're low calorie, low sugar, 
but high in fiber and high in protein. And Ross, I don't know about you. Well, you've been away, so maybe you didn't get the package, but I got a brand new built bar box delivered to my door. That's always nice when they're just when they just hit us up with uh, the random surprise box at our door. I love that. And you're going to love that too. And if there's a flavor that I think you're going to love, nothing better than waking up in the morning to the smell of freshly baked muffins. Well, how about a blueberry muffin protein bar from Built Bar? They're only 140 calories. You got 17 grams of protein packed in there. That's going to start your day off right as well. And to make your day even better, how about we hook you up with the promo code? Go to Built.com. Use the promo code LOCK15 for 15% off your next order. And you can enjoy some blueberry muffin Built Bar protein bars as well. One more time, guys. Built.com. Promo code LOCK15. 15% off your order. And you can be enjoying these Built Bars too. It's Built Bar, the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. All right, Pilsy. So it's time to discuss not our favorite topic, but one that is clearly getting people talking. And that is Eric Branstrom. He is polarizing to say the least. And I'm going to pull up his Elite Prospects page since joining the Ottawa Senators, even the year that he did join, because the AHL numbers, they're always there. They're always extremely good, except, I mean, Dash two, no points this year. But again, you got to think that it's weighing on him. The fact that he's like, what do I need to do to get a proper chance in the National Hockey League? So what is it to you that's holding him back? Well, first, before I get into that, I just had the thought of, uh, again, we're getting ahead of ourselves talking about the Sens trading Branstrom, but imagine uh, Dorian trades Branstrom, comes up to the mic at the podium and says, this is my proudest day. Yeah. (laughs) This is my proudest day as a GM after <laughs> trading France. Oh, man. Stop. Hey, at have, least we got Igor. At least we got Igor that. in that trade. At least we got Yeah, Igor. yeah definitely. Yeah, anyways. Um, getting serious here. What does Branstrom need to do? I mean, with DJ Smith as head coach of the Ottawa Senators, I just don't know if this is going to work out, like, straight up. And I'm not faulting DJ for that because DJ is a guy that sticks to his guns and – He, uh, having success is maybe pushing it, but he's got this team to play above their punching class, right? Like, he... He really has them playing hard and... I love that, Pilsy. That's another Pilsyism. His his weight class. His weight class. Punching above his weight class. It was there. It was there. You know what I I mean. But you know what I mean? Like, he has this team playing so hard, and if you're not going to fit into his system and what he thinks a defenseman needs to do, it's just not going to work out. And, I mean, DJ Smith is here for another three seasons, and can Branstrom duke it out and, and get up to that weight class in three seasons? I'm not sure. So this might be just a situation where the team and the player need to realize that it's not working out and maybe mutually beneficial to move on again. This is all like really, really ramping things up. But we just, since we've heard this rumor, we're entertaining the topic. So I, I think that eventually, well, when it comes from Elliot Friedman, that's what I'm saying. Like the, it, there has been reasons to ramp this up and I don't want them to move brands from yet, but it might make a lot of sense, especially like a left shot defenseman once Sanderson comes in and I think he's going to have a seamless transition to the NHL. You got your top two guys, whoever you want to put on your third pair as your left shot defenseman doesn't really matter, right? So the need for Brandstrom to excel and be a top four left shot defenseman isn't really that high right now. There's not a lot of pressure there. And again, I'll repeat it. If DJ Smith is here, it's very unlikely that Branstrom's going to succeed as a right hand, as a right uh, side defenseman. DJ doesn't like putting him there. And that's where he would fit in best in this lineup when Sandy does enter the lineup. So I really think it's starting to look like a, a divorce between these two is coming up here because it's just not working out. Man, I'm just looking at a potential name that could come back for him. And holy, you think the situation is dire with Eric Branstrom in Ottawa? You should see what's going on with the New York Rangers in their ninth overall pick from the 2018 draft, the same year as Brady and JBD, Vitaly Kraftsov. So friend of the best friend of the show, Tony Ferrari put out on Twitter. He said, am I crazy here thinking that a Branstrom for Kraftsov trade could be beneficial for both sides. And then I pull up this article 
and Chris Drury, who's the GM now for the New York Rangers. He was formerly the GM for the Hartford Wolfpack, so the assistant GM for the Rangers took care of everything with their minor league team. While Kravtsov used the K- the European out clause in his contract to go back to the KHL, he was saying bye to his teammates, and Drury came out and yelled in front of everyone saying that he quit on the team, that he's a terrible dude. So obviously he's not coming back, right? So he ended up coming back later that year, got to play a bit, and Chris Knobloch, who's the head coach, great name, by the way, for the Hartford Wolfpack, said he did everything that he could. He's a big Russian right winger. like Not like Igor big. He's got, I'd say, a little bit quicker than Igor, but maybe not as hard of a shot, that sort of thing. But you look up and down his elite prospects page. 6'3", 193 pounds. Yeah, so again, yeah, tall and, and lanky. You hope he doesn't get sick like... Uh, very in terms of what you'd say there no but uh with with his elite prospects page just cruising up and down him i can't say i've seen him play very often he's one of those guys who shoots on his off wing typically right he's a lefty but plays yeah but plays on the right side he's played 20 nhl games only has four points funny enough bill he was loaned last year to the team that vitaly abramov ended up going to in tractor in chelia brinks he had 24 points there 16 goals it's just an interesting name that's thrown out there. I'm curious if it makes sense, but I don't know if I'd be happy with that return, right? Because with Eric Branch, it's just, is it time, Pilsy, for Sens fans to remove the Mark Stone aspect from Eric Branch? Because I think that if you hold on to that, which I mean, it's reality, it's a fact, but no matter what, you're going to be disappointed with the return. Yeah, I mean, like um, the um, the names escaping me, but like the Vegas GM said when he acquired oh, Cal- Mark Cal- Stone. Oh, Kelly McCrimmon. Uh, no, it was it was the other guy at that oh, time. Oh, George McPhee. George That's McPhee. Time. Yeah, his quote after acquiring him was, "Guys like Mark Stone do not become available in this league, and any chance you have to grab him, you need to trade for him and extend him." I'm paraphrasing. It was something like that, but that that's the bluntness of it. Like Mark Stone. I don't know too many players you could have got in return that would make you feel like you had an equal return for Mark Stone, right? Like it's <laughs> straight up. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There's some similarities for sure, but straight up, I'm not sure about that one. So, like, really, any way you slice it, you're probably not going to be happy with that. And as far as acquiring Vitaly Kravtsov, I don't love it either because I think Brandstrom's value is higher than Kravtsov, yeah. but. Like if they start- throw in Lafreniere, we can talk. <laughs> yeah, as a as a throw in, but then you start looking at it like Ross. This guy's played in the KHL since 2016. He that's five years ago. He he, he would have been 16. He was 16 years old playing yes. in the KHL, and he has like over like he has almost 200 games of KHL experience. My math is probably off there closer to 150 probably, but 150 games of KHL experience as a 21 year old. And like you said, 16 goals in 49 games last year is pretty good for a young kid. So Andy does uh, fulfill a um, uh, right wing sniper position that this team is in need of not that Drake uh, isn't that, but someone that could kind of supplement the right side there since Dadnov left and that didn't work out. So he is a guy that once you start thinking and you start letting the gears turn, it seems to make sense. But at this point now, I don't know if the promise is there. And if you're looking at a guy that like, I can just picture Pierre Dorian when Kravtsov name comes up, is he a high character guy? Well, I'm going to go with no off the, off the top of the bat here just with that little bit of information you gave out. So the last thing I want to do is trade a guy in Eric Branstrom who you acquired for trading Mark Stone, who should have been the future captain of this team, and then trading Branstrom for a crapshoot guy in Kraftsov that you hope works and is known to be a locker room kind of distraction and toxic in the locker room. That's the last thing I want to do. Like, I don't want to be taking a hard gamble here. I want to be taking a safe gamble here and getting someone I know I can insert into an NHL lineup. So as far as that goes, one for one, Branson for Kraftsov, I'm not interested. No, me neither. I'm not interested one bit. He's a guy who is in the final year of his contract as well. So like, what are you going to do? You're he's going to want to get paid here? or else he's going to leverage going to the KHL, right? So you're going to have exactly. that battle. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm just not interested. Two goals in 20 games, dash six. 
with the New York Rangers this past season. Uh, we do have to mention, though, I mean, 16 goals in the KHL for a, a 19 20 year to, or, old or sorry, whatever, a 20 year yeah. old is still like, it's still something that you're like, oh, okay, four points in five playoff games as well. But no, like, We've got Vitaly Brahma. I, I don't see them as like obviously different stature, different type. We've got players, our Vitaly already. Exactly. We've reached our quota <laughs> in that. Uh, all right, Pilsy. Well, that, that's about all we've really got today, right? Because we put out yesterday's episode a little bit later on. Unfortunately, my internet was not agreeing with us. This one will come out soon. And we're going to record tonight for tomorrow's preview show. Uh, will James Reimer be in net? You do not want to hear the numbers that Reimer has against the Senators. But I'll tell you anyways, because it's worked so far, Mrazek was 8-1 and one against Ottawa. Beat him. Kudobin. Kudobin. I think 9-1 and one against Ottawa. Yeah. Beat him. So bring us, bring us James Reimer. Please, Get us with San your Jose. best shot. Let's exactly. do it. Exactly. Otherwise, it'll be Aiden Hill. We're also going to do a deep dive on... The Air Carlson trade. Shocker! I know. But we'll also get into that. Pilsy, plug your ears. But Rudy Balsers will make his return to the Ottawa, uh, no, I was going to say organization, but to Ottawa, the city, with his new teammates. And Jonathan Dolan, let's finish off with that. Because good on him. You remember being in the editing suites at the College of Sports Media with me. Why don't you describe to our listeners how I felt when they traded him for Alex Burroughs? It was... I mean, it was bad, man. I had to really rein you in there. I think uh, we had to go over uh, five or six deleted tweets because your anger was out of control with the Dolan for Burroughs trade. Especially, I think especially you lost it when the Burroughs extension got announced. Oh my god! As well, so uh, yeah, that was back in our early days, and I thought maybe uh, these tweets might not be a good reflection of us uh, moving forward here, but. Uh, it, it was a rough situation. Ross was uh, beside himself with that trade. Hey, at least there was only like 10 people following us at that point. And nobody, yeah. It was like screaming into the void. So you love to see yeah. that for, uh, for Jonathan Dolan to finally get his opportunity, uh, a different organization later. So sends fans like, just be thankful that it was the Montreal Canadiens. He got his first NHL goal against and yeah. a second, because yeah. you know, with the Senators history, they love giving up players. We're giving up first goals to rookies in the league. So that is no longer an option. However, what is more surprising to you? I saw someone throw this out on Twitter. I wish I could give it credit, but I mean, it's it's pretty cut and dry. The Buffalo Sabres starting 3-0 and or the Montreal Canadiens starting 0-4? Oh, man. Option A, easily. Like... Habs go, Habs go and have. I mean, I'm not that surprised by it. You and with your number Carey one Price. defenseman, your number one goalie, and your number one center, that's tough. And inserting Michael Hoffman uh, is kind of a subtraction move for that. Subtraction room, by I'd addition? Say. Yeah, subtraction you by addition. You don't often hear that. I like there that. There we go. That's a new one. Um, so, yeah, definitely. Uh, the, the Sabres, like, I wasn't sure if they were going to win three games all season. So, for them to start off 3-0 you know, is pretty damn good. Yeah, agreed. So not that I don't like the Habs starting 0-4 more than, yeah. than that. So, hey, lots of good stuff coming. The Ottawa Senators finally will have a game day tomorrow, and we'll be here for a full preview. That should be in your podcast feed bright and early. We're going to post that later tonight. And Pilsy's smirking at me because he's like, oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? We'll see about that. But yeah, thanks so much for listening. Again, make sure to go back and listen to the Shane Pinto interview. That guy is an absolute beauty and subscribe wherever you download your podcast subscribe on youtube we are over 900 the road to a thousand continues remember when we get to a thousand we're going to reach out to one lucky subscriber and we're going to get tickets to an ottawa game not of your choice of our choice because we got to plan a time where we can both be in our nation's capital travel not included travel not, travel not included. included so chris traveler we're not paying for your flight from dubai sorry however we would absolutely love to take one of our subscribers to a Ottawa Senators game this season. So all that great stuff ahead. Thanks so much for listening. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross